Of course, we should always be ready to repel any aggression, any attack on Russia. Regardless of the situation uh, our partners nations are in, they should always realize that they would be better off not messing with us, uh, talking about a possible military conflict. But uh, thankfully, I don't think anybody seriously considers the possibility of starting a military conflict with Russia. I would like to remind you that Russia is one of the biggest nuclear powers. Uh, these are not just words, this is real, and uh, we actually strengthen our nuclear forces. They are more compact now, but they're also more efficient. They are more modern. They have modern weaponry. And uh, we continue to boost their potential, and we are going to do this in the future as well. This is not to threaten anybody, this is just for us to feel protected and be able to implement our economic and social plans. Uh, uh, the Russian Navy says there's nothing unusual for its submarines to patrol international waters, including those off the U.S. coast. It follows a New York Times report that two Russian subs were spotted just 200 miles off the American coast. The Pentagon is reportedly concerned. It could point to more assertive Russian tactics. U.S. analysts say not since the Cold War have Russian submarines approached so close to America's coast. But officials in Moscow insist they have never stopped patrolling international waters. Our Navy should not be idling its time away. And it's not only about fighting piracy or other international campaigns. So it's a normal process, and those who make statements are pretty well aware of that. We could also say a lot about their navy and where it goes. Meantime, more rising tension is looming farther east with China as President Obama prepares for a second term. A new report suggests China is just two years away from deploying nuclear ballistic missiles on its submarines, missiles with a 4,600-mile range. China recently unveiled a second sophisticated stealth fighter jet that industry experts say may have been developed with stolen U.S. technology. The Chinese J-31 stealth fighter has an air intake and wing dimension that is suspiciously similar to the American F-35 and a silhouette similar to Lockheed Martin's F-22 Raptor. Furthermore, U.S. Navy officials confirm a Russian nuclear-powered attack submarine was detected 300 miles off the east coast of the United States in late October. Russia's Navy commander announced earlier this year that on June 1st, Russian nuclear-powered subs would return to patrolling the world's oceans as they did during the Soviet time spread. begin in China. We got a glimpse of the country's fleet of nuclear submarines for the first time. These submarines have participated in multiple training and drills simulating actual combat. Using domestically designed techniques, the fleet has also set numerous Chinese records. Chinese television and newspapers bragged this week that the Chinese PLA has awesome power to strike American cities with nuclear missiles launched by Chinese submarines. Military videos and photographs have appeared on TV news programs and in newspapers this week in China, touting the communist nation's growing military might and a future war with the United States. The images have appeared on China Central TV, the People's Daily Newspaper, the PLA Daily, the China Youth Daily, and the Global Times. The Global Times published a lengthy article titled, China, for the first time, possesses effective underwater nuclear deterrence against the United States. The article includes 30 photographs and graphics showing the damage that Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California would suffer after being hit by Chinese nuclear warheads launched by stealth submarines. 
The article boasted that the West Coast radiation would be carried by the wind to Chicago. The Chinese news report said the PLA missiles will not target the U.S. Midwest, but strike the densely populated West Coast. In addition to Seattle and Los Angeles, the Chinese news media said San Francisco and San Diego will be targeted for destruction, killing, or injuring up to 12 million Americans. The Chinese newspaper said that Chinese ICBMs launched over the North Pole will easily obliterate New England and much of the East Coast, including Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, Baltimore, Maryland, home of the NSA, Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, Portland, Maine, and Norfolk, Virginia, the biggest naval port in America, an estimated 34,000 Japanese troops, naval destroyers, and fighter jets are scheduled to take part in a large-scale military exercise scheduled to end on November 18. Ramon, I'm hoping you have some answers for us. What are you hearing on your end? Well, Dina, as you can see here, the sun is starting to set here in Los Angeles. And it was about this time yesterday that a lot of people saw what they think looked like a missile being launched just off the coast of Los Angeles here. The problem is that the United States government, the military says they don't know what it is. A lot of people are not buying that information. Now, most of us have seen the video by now of this huge uh, condensation trail going after what looks like a missile or some sort of rocket. Now, we've talked to a lot of military experts who have weighed in on this. Some of them say that it could have been a missile that was fired off accidentally by the U.S. military. Some say that it was just uh, some sort of fighter, fighter jet and the trail that it left behind made it look like a missile. However, the fact that the U.S. government has been hush on this, saying they don't know what it is, has uh, got, has raised a lot of suspicions about what this truly is. Now, we've talked to military experts from around the world, including in Russia, who have weighed in on what they think might have happened. All experts, I think, agree that it's uh, a launch of some kind of uh, ballistic missile and probably underwater. And I think that it's a great embarrassment for the American military. It shows that with all the billions uh, spent on the national defense, the United States basically is vulnerable to this kind of uh, unwarranted attacks. Joseph Farah is the founder of WorldNet Daily. According to Joseph Farah's G2 Bulletin in an article dated November 19, 2010, experts are now saying that the mystery contrail off the California coast last week was from a Chinese missile. And of all things, that the muted response thus far was a decision made by the president himself. And that U.S. Navy anti-submarine warfare sensors apparently failed again. And on top of this, experts are speculating that the Pentagon is working with the media to orchestrate a cover-up of the entire affair. Farah's report says this, that the U.S. Defense Department and North American Aerospace Defense Command have speculated publicly that the unidentified contrail of a projectile simply came from a jet airplane and posed no security threat to the United States. But, Farrow reports, several experts are now raising provocative and disturbing questions about the government's official response. Two governmental military experts with extensive experience working with missiles and computer security systems have examined the television video and conclude that the mysterious contrail originating some 30 miles off the coast near Los Angeles did not come from a jet airliner. But rather, they say, the exhaust and the billowing plume emanated from a single-source nozzle of a missile, probably made in China. They further suggest the missile was fired from a submerged Chinese nuclear submarine off America's coast, and point out that the timing of the alleged Chinese missile shot coincided with an increasing confrontation between the U.S. and China, and was likely meant to send a message to Washington. Indeed, the Federal Aviation Administration documents that there were no aircraft flying in the area at that time, the night of November the 8th, Farrah's report says. 
a former U.S. Air Force fighter pilot and commander of an F-15 squadron and an F-16 wing, Brigadier General Jim Cash was assigned to NORAD as an assistant director of operations and is fully knowledgeable of NORAD procedures. Here is what he says. The question that still must be answered is why NORAD's muted response was simply that North America was not threatened, and later our government approved the lame excuse that the picture recorded was simply an aircraft leaving a contrail. He went on to say, There is absolutely no doubt that what was captured on video off the coast of California was a missile launch, was clearly observed by NORAD, assessed by a four-star general in minutes, and passed to the president immediately. Cash continued with this ominous warning. We must question the timing of this shot across our bow. The president was abroad being diplomatic, which means trying to placate China. And in this astounding admission, Wayne Madsen, a former naval officer who has worked at the National Security Agency and the Naval Data Automation Command, said the inability to pick up what he described as a Chinese Gen-class submarine-launched ballistic missile isn't the first time U.S. Navy anti-submarine warfare sensors have failed. Madsen, who today is an investigative journalist, said the Pentagon is working, quote, overtime with the media and on the Internet to cover up the latest debacle. However, even some reporters who cover the Pentagon full-time are beginning to question the Pentagon's version of events over the skies west of Los Angeles. Dr. Lyle J. Rapaki of Sentinel Intelligence Services, LLC, said that the contrail incident off the Los Angeles coast is fraught with peril due to the defense systems and protocols in place that should have detected the alleged submarine. Dr. Rapaki said, The decision to officially announce that North America was not threatened and all the excitement was due to an aircraft leaving a contrail is a decision that reaches beyond the four-star general level and goes directly to a decision made by the commander-in-chief. The United States led the way recently along with the European Union to impose heavy economic sanctions against Russia. Now, U.S. air commanders are notifying leadership at the Pentagon of increased Russian activity dangerously close to the American airspace. At least 16 times in the last 10 days, Russian nuclear bombers have flown right near the Alaska border, an exercise that Russia is calling routine training missions. Twice now, American fighter jets have intercepted Russian spy planes and nuclear bombers and escorted them out of the sensitive airspace. Last month, two Russian bombers flew within 50 miles of the California coastline before turning back. U.S. Major Ben Smith says the recent Russian Air Force missions are a spike in activity. 